Okay, in this video, we're going to make, uh, I'm going to show you some code that can call an API, a Databricks API, uh, and give you back information on the uh, jobs or, you, in other words, workflows. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the uh, documentation uh, they give you on the um, these two particular API calls. One is list jobs, okay, and a job is basically a workflow which if we look over here, these are my jobs in my personal account, okay? And all these on the right. So that's what the jobs are, um, and that's what we're looking for a listing of. So we get a choice here of, it, of putting in a parameter. The default is 20 to see how many come back, uh, to limit how many come back. Otherwise, you get between 0 uh, and um, 100, all right? And that's about it. So here on the left side is all your different parameters you can place in. All right. And on their left, I'm sorry, on your left side are all your parameters. And on your right side is what the data you're going to receive back on your response. Okay. So this is your request. That's your response. So let's go over and look at the code. So the first thing you want to do, the first thing, okay, you bring in your libraries that you're going to need. Uh, you have your Databricks URL, which is my variables. These are all my variables here that I'm going to use to uh, form the request. Um, and so then, so basically we have my Databricks URL, which is my workspace uh, URL, my, a token, which I have to create over inside of um, Databricks, which there's many videos on that. Uh, header, this is going to be my authorization, and that's where the token is going to be implanted okay uh, then my endpoint which is again the API call that you saw from the prior uh, screen of documentation and then we have our payload which in this case I'm limiting it to 25 uh, I think I only have 13 workflows in there anyways but uh, this is my again this is where the parameter comes in here okay after that I form my uh, response uh, variable which is a request that get um, for Databricks URL plus endpoint. Just put in your variables from upstairs. Data payload headers equals header. Okay, so you can refer back to here for what those mean. And then once that is done, it's going to come back with um, an object of RESP uh, dot text. And from that, we're going to basically, actually, this is where it loads that into JSON. And it, then it creates a dictionary here. The dictionary, I go ahead and refer to the jobs, uh, the jobs output um, level, and then I'll bring back all my material. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and take a look at that. So as you, I want to refer back to the jobs. So here's the output for the jobs. Refer to jobs, I'll bring back all the other data. Okay, so I'm going to run that. I've already run it, but I'm going to run it again. Uh, it gives them pretty good information here, so it gives you... Uh, if there's any email notifications, um, it gives you the workflow name, which is here. Okay. Uh, and then it gives you further down the created time, which is important when it's created. Um, and email notifications, like I said. And then tags. This is important here, this tag information. Right, so if you're tagging your jobs, and um, your job ID is here, the creator, and let's see what else is here. So as I said, th this repeats all of the different, um, all of the different jobs, right? So actually, I'm sorry, I, there's not only there's a lot of them. So here's job, the first one, here's the second one, all right and so forth all the way down so there's all 13 are showing up okay so that's the what you get for the jobs level all right now what we really want to see a lot of times is the what's underneath the job level because a job uh will will run you know it could run twice a day it could run once a day it could be once a month but anyways we want that information to really do analysis with so that's a different 
instead of going to this API list jobs, we want to list the job runs. Okay, so you see it's job runs in this case. So again, that the API is almost the same, but a little bit different. And what you send in can be different for the parameters, of course. On the left side, they're all listed here. You go through that. Uh, what I want to do is send in a job ID. And I want you to look at the right side here. The right side has a tremendous amount of data that you can get back. Uh, as you can see here, all these little plus signs are uh, additional um, arrays, and they have a lot of content in them. Okay, so all your task information can come back, job cluster information, okay. But when you initially run this, you don't get all that information back. You'll get back some of it. But if you want to get the task information, the cluster information, you need to come in here and set the um, expand task parameter. You have to send that in. And the default's false, so it doesn't bring back so much. But if you want everything, you need to set that to true. And I'm going to show you an example of that. Okay, let's jump back over to the API call the code. And here we go. Um, this is where we have passed it a single job ID. Uh, the job ID is for the elephant job. So let's go ahead and, and so it will just return one, um, one job run. And I'll show you that after we run it. So let's run that. Okay, let's look at our output. So here's our output. As you see, the output isn't extreme, right? So it's a several comps, not as much as what we saw before. So you have a creator, you have some, uh, you have your run ID, right? 221207. So if I go over to that particular um, job ID, right? So I can take that job ID and remember this 221207. And if I come here and just type in the job ID, it will show me it's a clone of workflow elephant with job cluster. So if I click on that, it see I have run it one time, and so you see uh, August 29th, 221207. So that's information about the run. Okay, here's the tasks in that run. There's a few, a couple of tasks, and um, if I go back to runs and I click on this, you'll see the start and end information, the start time and end time, as well as the duration. Okay, so there's then there's also not only other tasks, of course, there's compute that goes along with the task. So I have a couple computes in here um, also. So let's go back to that. And you don't see the computes or the tasks in here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun it with a, a different payload with a, that extra parameter I told you about, the expand tasks parameter. And what we'll see is a lot more information come back. And as you see, when I click here, now I have a scroll bar, right? So now I can scroll all the way down and see all that information. All right, so here's your run duration. But then we come down and we see our tasks, which not only do we have our start and end date for the whole, the whole job run, we also have a start and end date for the each task. So here's my task. If I look down in here, there it is, start time. And then we should have an end time, right, for the task itself. So that way you can really see how long each of your tasks are running. Um, and, of course, they should have their duration in here. Also, they have the cluster instances running on, okay. And um, it has a lot of information in here. So this is really cool. So the next one I want to show you, the last one, is just to get job runs. Uh, and this is passing no parameters, which means we're going to get every all the jobs that were run. And this is where uh, I think it only goes back probably 30 days or so, uh, or up to 100 runs. Uh, and so I haven't run any jobs for quite a while, so you're only going to see a couple uh, runs here. So I'm going to run this cell. And as you see in this cell, the payload is blank, right? So I'm not passing, sending in any parameters. We're running it wide open. So here's the output. We won't see tasks or clusters because I didn't ex add the extra parameter. So here we got, I got one job ID here, right, With its, which is the one we saw earlier. Then if we go a little further down, I got another job ID and its run ID. Of course, they're different. 
And um, so, yeah, so if you're running lots of jobs, of course, this, you'll be loaded with different information here. Then you'll put them in a, if you want to do more analysis, you'll put them over into a uh, table and do analysis on them. But that's it for this uh, discussion. Thanks for watching.